Welcome back, Gadgeteers. So just to warn you, this video is not going to be edited. It's just something that I wanted to talk to you about. And I'm sitting in a vehicle, as you can see, so there may be a lot of pauses. Remember, I'm on a ton of medicine, so that may affect what I say. Anyway, uh, to get right to it, is Intel doomed? Now, it's not easy just to say this company is doomed. They're going to get wiped out. If you think about it, and my background is in business management, uh, I have two business degrees, one in IT and business and one in just plain business. And when I think about a company that is really trying hard to stay, uh, keep its head above water, there's a number of reasons why that might occur. Now, I have four specific reasons that Intel is under attack, and we'll talk about that. But when you do a what's called a SWOT on a business, S-W-O-T, not SWOT as in call SWOT, um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So strengths and weaknesses are internal and opportunities and threats are external. So let's talk about these four reasons and then we'll go back to the SWAT and have a look at it and see where we think uh, they have problems so first on the list and I think everybody knows this, this is the first thing that is a threat to Intel's dominance of processors which is the AMD desktop processor and server processor um, AMD has basically uh, stump the chump I hate to say it but they're doing a really good job they have processors that have multiple cores far beyond what Intel has they're seeing numbers when they put it up against Intel's processors that are equal to or better than sometimes not you know especially with gaming it really depends it's all relative you know how the game was developed and who developed it and for what processor that doesn't mean Intel's dead, right? It just means they have a good, fierce competitor. Now that, normally when you look at the market, you would just say, no problem. Of course, we're gonna have a competitor and then we have to you know, move forward and, and try to bolster what our area of uh, expertise is, which is these desktop processors and server processors. So we're gonna move forward with that. The second one on my list, Apple M1 Silicon, Apple's own processors. This one I, I probably feel differently than most people do. You've probably seen several videos that say Apple Silicon has doomed Intel. Not for the reasons you would think, and I don't think they're doomed either. So we'll just get to that right away. My thoughts are, yes, the M1 Silicon it seems to have worked better than anybody could have imagined. Now keep in mind, there's a very narrow selection of software that is actually native for the M1 ARM processor. The rest of it has to go through an interpretation software program. I think it's called Rosetta. And in order for those uh, x86 coded or you know the original processor the original PCs all that software is x86 coded so this works great for in, uh, not Intel <laughs> works great for Apple because they control their little ecosystem they call it a walled garden very often not Apple other people it's true I mean Apple they have this control over all the software that can come into their little walled garden, their little ecosystem. And it's logical because they control the hardware, they control the operating system. So if they switch it to ARM, no problem. So I just want to, uh, if I haven't clarified, ARM architecture and x86 architecture are two different types of architecture. x86 is the older architecture and for the most part all software dating back is compatible with it dating back pretty much forever you should be able to run an old program on a Windows computer sometimes you can't because Windows doesn't allow it but we'll get into that later possibly ARM processors are risk-based 
processors, reduced instruction set processors. So they basically speak a different language. So if you create a computer with an ARM processor, this one over here that uses x86 programs cannot send its programs over here to the ARM processor. It just wouldn't work. It's, it's like two different languages. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> so I do not consider the Apple M1 a very big threat. If you think about the market share that Apple has of computers in general, it's really not that huge. So it would erode all told maybe 5 to 10 percent of Intel's uh, base of customers. So not a huge thing yet. So Intel's kind of sitting there saying, well, AMD desktop and server processors and Apple. Hmm. Should we be concerned yet? Have you ever looked at IBM and what they went through? Uh, yeah, you should be concerned. Number three, this is relatively recent and I cannot believe how AMD did this. They basically walked in and completely trumped uh, Intel with mobile processors. Back in the day, you know, 10, 15 years ago, nobody who was smart would get a laptop with an AMD mobile processor in it. For one, it was really just a desktop processor and it heated up something terrible. And two, it was slower than Intel. So the only reason you would buy a laptop with an AMD processor, you know, 10 or 20 years ago was because that's what you could afford and it was at a marked discount compared to the model that was Intel processor. However, that was then, this is now. If you watch any videos about the AMD x86 mobile processor, it uses less power, it's far faster and does a far better job than the Intel based equivalent and it has more cores so that's pretty intense if you think about it uh, so that's the third reason and Intel now should be like hello are you seeing this they should be reacting but I have yet to see a reaction we'll go into that number four will this be the nail in the coffin no I don't think so but we'll talk about that I know I keep saying that. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, Microsoft starting to create their own ARM processors. Now, they tried to do this before with the uh, Microsoft Surface tablet, and I thought it was awesome. There was a small problem with the world of x86 code out there. Nobody wanted to recode their software to work on the Microsoft ARM uh, service tablet and so the only real program you could use was uh, Microsoft Office and of course you had the internet not really what people wanted I mean yes those are the top two if you're in business you know or whatever for uh, stuff like that but what if you wanted to play a game what if you wanted to download a program that was x86 compatible I understand that that Surface Pro, uh, no, I, I'm sorry, I don't think it had any uh, interpretation layer so it could run an x86 program. Um, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I believe. It was one or the other. So those are the four reasons why I really think Intel's in a lot of trouble, but will it crush them? No. You got to remember, Intel is a mega company. Um, and I mentioned IBM before. If you look at IBM and all the changes that they've went through and all the things they went through, keeping in mind IBM started international business machines way back when in the early 1900s. And they went through several changes, but the reason they could do it without completely crashing is their incredible capital holdings. They had plenty of money, they had uh, the logistics, and they had the intellectual property to be able to do all these things. Some people said, wow, I can't believe IBM sold off 
their you know laptop business to Lenovo and then they sold their hard drive business the Death Star hard drive to another company well yeah that's a licensing agreement and it comes with royalties so it's not like IBM didn't get anything out of it it was perpetual income and they didn't have to use staff um, supplies material for construction you know factories all that stuff so Intel is kind of in a very similar position but they're a little bit different because they have a much narrower product that they can offer and those four reasons that I said uh, AM, AMD desktop servers Apple Silicon M1 CPUs AMD mobile processors and Microsoft ARM processors are we talked about strength weaknesses opportunities threat a serious threat uh, they're external so they're a serious threat does that give Intel some opportunities well that has yet to be discovered I haven't really thought about it maybe ARM processors but <clears throat> My thoughts are that the ARM processor, if Intel was to try and release one, it probably wouldn't help them at this point. I mean, maybe it would. It could. Now, um, strengths and weaknesses. So they're getting attacked from four angles. Their, their main business, their main product is being attacked from four angles. Um, what are their strengths and weaknesses? Well right away if I was to think about weaknesses it is that two things either they are refusing to see the writing on the wall and changing as needed or they simply don't see it yet which I cannot believe I, I just can't believe so what are we talking about well the changing market the flexibility flex flexibility of the market to change and become something altogether different look at Microsoft they're basically one up one upping Apple with this boutique quality equipment you know computers and everything and people are like oh I really like it I, you know two thousand dollars is a lot of money for a laptop but what the heck I'll pay it it's really nice okay um, one of the things I wanted to discuss that number four threat the x86 processors <clears throat> I don't really see it as much of a threat because you're going to have to convince all the coders to either start coding for ARM processors or Microsoft has to create an interpretation layer much like Rosetta to interpret x86 code into ARM code. And <clears throat> much like what Intel did, it's going to have to be perfect. People will not tolerate a system uh, that just runs bad when you run x86 native code on this ARM processor so it's not the same as Apple with that closed ecosystem Microsoft has a lot of work to do so it's not a huge threat yet plus they say <clears throat> excuse me if you read the documentation stories articles uh, Microsoft's looking first to put ARM processors in servers so it might be a long time coming I would call that a remote threat so what are Intel's strengths well I was thinking about that um, they have the intellectual property right so they have a lot of patents they have fabrication facilities they have qualified staff who know how to do it they have engineers um, they have the experience of decades of experience with high quality processors yes AMD is high quality as well but if you think about it if you were gonna have a house built would you rather have a company that's been doing it for 30 years and one that's okay not a good example AMD has been doing it for 30 years too but not to the extent that Intel has and not with the quality that Intel has so just something to think about I don't think Intel is doomed. They're too big. I'm not going to say they're too big to fail because eventually they could. They could go away like uh, Cyrix did back in the old days. The processing company kind of got ate alive. But my thoughts are Intel is not going to go that way. Somehow or another, if they start reacting, they will find a niche. 
they're like a uh, sluggish ship, you know, and you're trying to get it to make a turn. It's like the Titanic, hey, there's an iceberg ahead, let's start making a turn here, come on. Uh, but they don't seem to be very reactive, um, or we just don't know. They're reacting internally, and they have a big plan for something coming up. I don't know what, but... If you're thinking Intel's going to die in a year, it's not going to happen. They have plenty of money to keep them floating for a while. We'll see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Had a good time making it. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments you'd like to make, I would be very happy to hear them. Thank you for watching. See you next time.